How's it going? So today we're going to look at Hive and we're going to look at some of the most useful Hive QL queries that we can run. We'll start off by creating a database and then populate some tables and let's see what we can do with this. I've already started up the Cloudera Quick Start virtual machine. There's a number of ways that we can access Hive. Specifically, there are two methods that we can use. One is we can use Hue. It has a nice graphical user interface. So if we go to the virtual machine and just click on Hue, Hue is a graphical user interface that allows us access to a number of other apps that are running on the Cloudera virtual machine. So we can see that by default, uh, we can access Impala. Now you may be wondering, well, this is a database as well. What's the difference between Impala and Hive? There are a number of significant differences between Impala and Hive. Both Impala and Hive can be used to run SQL queries. They're both quite easy to learn especially if you know SQL. Hive uses Hive QL and it converts data into MapReduce or Spark jobs that run on the Hadoop cluster. That means that it's actually not running that fast. If it's using Spark, it's running a lot faster than MapReduce. MapReduce is really slow. The current versions of Hive do use Spark. Impala, on the other hand, uses a very specialized fast SQL engine, which is a lot faster than MapReduce and Spark. So you're looking at speeds of something like between six to 64 times faster than MapReduce or Spark. Now you may be wondering, well, which one should we use? Which is the better one? Hive is not necessarily ideal for interactive computing, whereas Impala is intended for interactive computing. Hive is batch-based because it's using uh, Hadoop's MapReduce, whereas Impala is not. Hive does support complex types, but Impala doesn't use that. Hive is fault-tolerant. Impala doesn't support fault-tolerance. So basically, if the execution fails halfway with Impala, you've got to start from the beginning. So how do we access Hive from here? If you just click where it says query, go to editor and you can see that you can either edit in Impala, Hive. We can also have access to Pig, Spark and MapReduce. So to access the Hive editor, go to query, click on the drop down and from here you can select Hive. In this region here, we're going to type in our queries, but we can see that we can do other administrative functions as well from this user interface. So as an example, what we'll do is we'll see, do we have any databases? So it's show databases. To execute this line, we need to put in a semicolon and to run the line, click down here. And we can see here that we have no databases. There's just the default database in here. The first thing that we're going to do is we'll create a database. Now we can do it by typing in some code and we'll have a look at an, at an example of that. But we can actually use the Hue interface to create a database. So if we click on this plus sign And we need to type in the name of a database that we wish to create. So we'll create a, a database called sales. If you want to give a description, you can do that. And just click submit. And we can see here that we have our sales database. Next, we should populate our sales database with a table. Next, we need to populate our database with tables and with data. So what you need to do is to click on this arrow. So go to sales. And now we can create a table. Click on the plus symbol. To create a table, we need to identify where our data is and the file in which our data resides. We need to click on path and we need to identify our CSV file, which contains the data. The name of the CSV file 
by default will also become the name of our table. So click on upload a file, go to the location where your CSV file is. So in my case, it'll be in Cloudera Home and the file that we are interested in is book CSV. You can download this file from the link given in the description. Click on open and here is our book.csv. Select this file and we can see here the path to where the file is located. It's a CSV file, so it's comma separated and we have our attribute names, ISBN title. So, so this is a file that contains details of books, who the author was, when the book was published, who the publisher is. This file is part of some data that was downloaded from Amazon. So in addition to this uh, information of ISBN title, author, year and publisher, we have some URLs as well. Click next. Here we have an opportunity to change the name of our table if we so wish. Sales.book. Sales refers to the database. Book refers to the table. We can also change the name of our fields from here. So for example, if we don't want ISBN, we can delete it and just type in whatever name we choose, but we'll leave it as ISBN. Once you're happy with that, click Submit. And our book table has been created and it has been populated. And we can see here a sample of the data that is in this table. What I should mention is that our data, our CSV file, was on the local Linux file system. We can also upload data from the Hadoop file system. And later on, we will see how to actually do that. From Hortonworks, you can download a Hive cheat sheet which is actually quite useful. There is a cheat sheet available from Cloudera, but I think this uh, one from Hortonworks is, is quite uh, good because it gives you a comparison of the normal SQL that you would use uh, with HiveQL. And it also gives you some uh, sample queries as to what their function is. And, and there's some more uh, useful information there as well. The link to downloading this is once again in the description. Next we'll just run a few queries uh, using HiveQL just to see how this pans out. So click on query, go to editor, go to Hive. On our system we actually have two databases. We have the default database, the name of which is default, and we also have our sales database. We can type in our queries in the editor, but we need to refer to which database we are using. Two ways that you can do this. One way is that you can, every time that you type in a name of a table, you've got to put in also the name of the database. So that means more typing. Another way that we can do this is by using the use command. Notice that as I typed in use, the editor has also shown us that the word use is a keyword. I'll just delete the word, the letter E, and we can see that use is still there. Press the tab key, it completes the word for you. So we want to use sales. So this is our database, semicolon to indicate the end of our statement, and then click on the execute button and we have here success. So now we will only be using our sales database. So let's run a few queries. We're going to use select count. So we're going to count all the titles and the year from our book table and group by year. Click on execute. Notice that it's taken 36.1 seconds to run such a simple query. So down here, we have our results. We can limit the results by using the limit keyword. So I'll just type in here limit, and you can see that the system has recognized that I want to use limit, and we'll limit the result to just 10 lines. And notice it's taken 23 seconds to run the query. 
and we have our results here. We can actually speed up our SQL queries by using Impala. And we've already seen uh, what are the advantages of Impala. So if you go to Query, go to Edit, go to Impala, and you can see that our sales database is available in Impala. So we'll run our simple select statement again. Before we run this query, we need to identify which database we're using. Now we could have used the use keyword, but as we haven't done that, we need to indicate here which database we're going to be using. So we're going to be using the sales database and we can now execute this query. And you can see it only took 1.2 seconds to run the query. And here we have the results. This is the full results. This was, this was not the limited results and yet still so much faster. We'll go back to Hive and we'll run another query. You can see here that at the bottom here, we have our queries that we've already run. So it keeps a history of our queries. Let's now have a look at how we can use the command line interface. So there's a number of ways that you can access the command line. You can go to applications, system tools, and there's a terminal there, or you can go here at the top of the menu and use the command line from there. To use the command line, you need to start up the Hive interface. So just type in Hive. Now we have access to Hive. So let's see which databases we have in Hive. It'll be exactly the same SQL statements that we've used in Hue for Hive and for Impala. And we can see actually this hasn't taken too long to run this query. And once again, we can use the use keyword to ensure that we are using the correct database and it's the sales database that we want to use. And now we can run a few queries. And we can see that this query has taken 32 seconds to run. So in this query, we were looking for the ISBN number, the title, the name of the author, and we want to find any author that has the name or has the word Michael in their name. And here we have a list of these authors. We can see that running queries in the command line is the same as if you were running queries in Hue. Slightly different if you want to add a table. So what we'll now do is we'll add a table from the command line. To create a table, we need to use the create keyword. We're adding a table called prize, which has a year, ISBN number, a title, author, publisher, and the number of books sold. And we're saying that the fields are delimited by a comma and that this is a text file. So this will just create a table. It will not load any data into the table. We've now created our table. We can check and see if the table has been created by using the describe keyword. And we can see, yes, the table has been created. Next, we need to upload our data into the Hadoop file system. We have to put the data into the Hadoop file system. And for that, we need to use the command put. So open up another terminal. For this, we need to use the command Hadoop. And this has now uploaded our data into the Hadoop file system. If we go back to the Hive shell, and from here we can now load the data using the load data command. So this command is showing load data in path. So it's going to take the data, which is in prize.csv on the Hadoop file system, and it's going to write it into the table prize. The keyword overwrite overwrites any data that may be in the prize table, but there is no data in the prize table, so there's really nothing 
to override. And so we can now run this command. And now our table has been populated and we can check this. And we can see here the results that 34 rows have been fetched and it was quite a fast query. We can also write the results of our query to a file. We're going to write to our local directory on the Linux file system. The dot indicates a home directory. In the home directory, create a directory called Hive Result, and which is going to count the number of authors and group by author. So our query has finished. It took 33.118 seconds. We can now check in our home directory the results. So if we do ls, we can see there is hive result. cd into hive result. Do ls. We can see the file that has our results. So we'll just do a cat. And we can see here are our results. We can also run queries from a file. So we'll create a file with a query. We'll go back to the local file system and we'll use gedit to create a file called myquery.hql. For the file extension, you can also use q instead of hql. So let's create our file. So we're going to run a query to find out what's the, what's the latest year from which a book was published. In the Hive shell, we need to use the keyword source and a path to where our query file resides. And we can see that the query took 31.297 seconds to run and one value was returned, which was 2004. To quit from the Hive shell, just need to type in quit. And now we've exited from the Hive shell. To delete a table, we use the keyword drop. So we're going to delete the table prize. To check if the table has been dropped, we can use the keyword show. And we can see that we only have the book table. We can also drop the database as well. And for that, once again, we use the keyword drop. If our database had no tables, this could be used to drop the database, but our database has tables, so we have to use the keyword cascade. And this will delete our database. I won't do it from here, but I'll show you how you can also do it from Hue. So we can go to Hive, and we're just refreshing, and you can see that prize no longer exists. From the Hive editor, we just type in drop, and we can see that the database has been dropped. And we can see here as well that the database has been dropped. If you found this useful, then please subscribe. And I'd really be interested to know how you got on uh, with this video so leave a comment and if you have any questions once again leave a comment and i'll do my best to answer your question